YouTubers, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone. And we get a new 22 revolver or 22 pistol or 22 rifle, whether it's new or used, we get it. And we're told the best thing to do is get a whole bunch of different 22 ammo first thing, take it to the range and shoot it and see which one the pistol or revolver or rifle likes best in terms of accuracy, performance, function, and non-barrel letting. And certainly we can do that. We've all done that. Now this is a Browning Buckmark 22 semi-automatic pistol. But as you know, Kerry recently got a hold of a vintage Colt Woodsman semi-automatic pistol, 22 caliber. And he took it to the range and he was testing ammo in it. And as he was doing so, accuracy went right out the window. In fact, he started getting keyholes. So he took the gun home and cleaned it. And this is what came out of his barrel. In fact, a lot more than this. This was the biggest chunk. What you see here is leading. Pieces of leading that actually lined his barrel so that what happened was his bullet wasn't getting any rifling stabilization at all. No wonder you're keyholing. But if you look at the, at the, at the back side of this, you can see rifling there. The ammo he was shooting was Remington Thunderbolt. Now, some shooters like that Remington Thunderbolt. Shoots real well for them. So how come Carries hates the 22 Thunderbolt? And in fact, we can get leading like this also in our own guns. And we cannot have this. Leading is an awful thing. It takes all the fun out of shooting because you've got to clean that out. And no accuracy. So let's talk about this in 22s. So YouTubers, to save time, none of the guns in this video are loaded. All are safety checked. Anyway, getting back to the subject. The same rules apply for bullet performance for 22s as exist for all center fire calibers. The only difference is that we do not reload 22 rimfire. It's just not practical. So we buy this. Of course, rule number one, best bullet performance, we have to match the bullet to the gun. Now, it turns out that 22 rimfire magnum, the bullet diameter is 0.224 inch, industry standard. But we're not going to discuss the rimfire magnum. We're going to talk about 22 rimfire long rifle and shorts. What I did was I took my trusty calipers to the range and I mic'd all the 22 I had, but I also interviewed all the 22 shooters I could find and measured their bullets. And so here's what we got. Let you look at this to save time. This is the measurements that we got for five rounds of randomly chosen 22 rimfire ammo. Here's the brand and the bullets on the left, the range of diameters of the bullets in the middle, and the average on the right. Here are your sub loadings of 22 shorts and longs. Here are your target loadings that we ran into. And then these are high velocity. Your favorite might be in there. But what we find is that the average 22 ammo, the bullet diameters run anywhere from 0.220 to 0.226. So YouTubers, it turns out that today's 22 long rifle gun barrels are all made between 0.221 inch to 0.2225 inch groove diameter. Now what does that mean in terms of matching bullets to the board? Well, the, the best bullet performance for a semi-automatic pistol is if your bullets are 0.001 over your groove diameter. So you can figure out what the best ammo is by osmosis, just shooting lots of different kind of rounds and seeing which one works best. If you do it by osmosis, it's possible to get a real bad barrel letting experience like Kerry had. So there's, there's probably a better way and here it is. You can do it in a more scientific way, in which case you would go ahead and slug your barrel and then choose ammo that has bullets that are .001 over the measurement of your groove diameter. First, take a 22 round and what you want to do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and compress the case here, rotate 90 degrees, compress the case again, give it a good squeeze with needle nose pliers, go around, keep doing that and pretty soon this is what you'll see you'll compress the brass casing and start to release the heel bullet. 
because the case is crimped over the heel of the bullet, so both the bullet and the outside casing are the same diameter. Well, once you compress it a few times, you can grab the nose of the bullet and wiggle until the bullet comes off. Now notice we maintain the shank of the bullet without any damage, and that's the important thing. Doesn't matter doesn't matter if the nose is all deformed as long as the shank is okay. So we're going to slug the barrel with this. So that Federal loads their 22 high velocity with 1.4 grains of powder. Obviously some kind of small flake powder and obviously fast burning. But this powder I'm sure is not available to reloaders. So to slug the barrel you'll need a good mallet preferably plastic coated so it's no chance of marring anything, your soft lead slug, a starter made out of a golf tee with the point nipped off, and then a dowel that is less than 22 caliber in diameter but still stiff enough to do the job. Do not use a metal dowel. You might want to go ahead and dismount the barrel of your pistol and you can drive it through from the breech end if you do that but not all guns can do that so let's just say take the soft lead slug and place it into the barrel and gently start that like so then use your golf tee to get that going into the barrel, like so. Now some of the golf tee rubbed off, that's okay. Next go ahead and insert your wooden dowel and keep on tapping that slug through the barrel. Now notice that you don't need a vise because a soft lead slug causes no problem doing this. So go ahead and tap that through. And there you go. Notice that you've got the rifling engraved into the shank of the bullet. And that's your groove diameter right there. Now YouTubers, it's a simple matter to go ahead and mic the shank of that bullet for your groove diameter for that particular gun. And you have .221 inch. And what that means is for this gun, you want bullets that are .001 over that and no less. So if you got 0.222 or 0.2225 or even 0.223, that is fine. But nothing less than 0.221. Because if you go underneath 221, you're going to risk barrel letting and not accurate ammo. So you see, YouTubers, that with this Browning Buckmark barrel at 0.221 inch, there are some ammo that we have to avoid such as this one here, the Remington 22 short. We wouldn't want to single feed those in there. We wouldn't want to use the Aguila. The standard velocities are all fine. The high velocities are all fine, except there are certain ones that are less than 221 inch, like this Western Bulk hollow point. If you shot a lot of this in that barrel, you'd have leading. Maybe not as much as Kerry got, but you'd have leading. Now it turns out that Kerry got his leading because Colt 22 long rifle barrels in their woodsman's back in that day, some of those barrels were 0.224 inch in groove diameter. You can imagine that if you shot any of these in a Colt barrel that was 0.224 inch, they would all lead. All these would lead badly. So for carry, he's going to have to find some 22 ammo that's got bullets that are 0.225 inch or so. And there are some ammo that, that's like that. Or he's got to use the copper plated bullets and maybe not shoot quite as many. Now YouTubers, you'll hear some people say you should slug the barrel of your revolver. But there's no need to do that. Because the critical thing for accuracy and also prevention of leading is the chamber throat, not the barrel on the revolver. 
The chamber throat is the front of the cylinder where the bullet comes out. So what you want to do is measure that dimension. What you do is take your calipers and use the inside measuring feature. Go ahead and span your chamber throat. Use the tip of your caliper only. Find the sweet spot where you're flush in there. And then measure, get your measurement. 0.223 inch. Now to save time, it just so happens I measured all of them and they're all 0.223. Now what does this mean? So YouTubers, for this fine Smith & Wesson Model 17 revolver, you want to use ammo that has bullets that are at least 0.223 inch, no smaller. And ideally, you want 0.224 to 0.2245 for maximum accuracy and prevention of barrel lift. So very interesting, for my revolver, you'll notice YouTubers that your stand velocity ammo has 223 Two two three five, those will work nicely in my revolver, but the other ones are all smaller and may not work as well and may cause increased barrel letting in the forcing cone. So now I know which ammo is best for my revolver, either the Remington Subsonic or the PMC Target or the Browning nail driver. And then YouTubers, the other factors to bullet performance and non-leading and best accuracy are bullet hardness, but that's not a problem. The factories have that under control pretty well with the velocity of 22 long rifle, the bullet hardness is ideal. And also they have very good lubricants. Some are kind of waxy feeling, some are dry feeling, but they all work pretty well. Just make sure that we haven't removed that waxy coating or the bullet lubricant over time and the ammo is good to go. So YouTubers, there's a rundown on 22 ammo for accuracy and also best clean shooting non-barrel letting. Bye for now.